Well, it's Bruce again at uh, fighterkitecentral.com. Today we're going to talk about flying line and reels. Now, there are several different styles of flying line reels that fighter kite flyers use. And I'll go through some of them with you and tell you the advantages and disadvantages. And then we'll go into uh, how to attach the flying line to the kite and what to expect with a flying line when you're using it. This is a reel that's about six inches in diameter. It has a flare on one side and flat on the other. This is a reel called a gator style reel because originally it was made by the Gator Bucket Company. It's a handheld fishing reel and you hold it like this and cast the line by swinging the weight over your head and uh, throwing the line out and the line then just spools off of the reel and that's the reason we use it for fighter kite flying you place the reel right in front of where you're standing so that your hands are directly above it because you want the line to flow from the reel without any hesitation whatsoever. Have it unspool, so you need your hand right above the reel. Now when you're flying a kite, uh, if the line were to get snagged on the edge of the reel, that hesitation is all it takes to uh, make the kite go in a direction you're not going to want it to go, that's for sure. Maybe crash. So you want the line to be able to unspool easily. This is a line uh, reel that is used by many manja flyers and Indian flyers and more traditional kite flying. It's a reel that has uh, two sticks coming out or a stick coming through it that you jam in the ground at an angle. And you want that angle to be such that the line again spools freely off of the reel. This isn't used very much for American style flying because it's uh, a little more awkward to use and harder to rewind the line on. This style of reel, though the gator reel, uh, I usually just mark with a pen what the line is I'm using and then I uh, put a piece of putty here in case I need to adjust the weight on the kite for uh, balance. To attach the kite to the uh, reel, I use, uh, well there's lots of ways to do it, but one way I just fold the line over, make a loop, and uh, make an overhand or a double overhand knot. You just want the knot to hold well. And then I put another knot near the end so that the overhand knot is probably a half inch or so from the very end of the original loop. So now I have a loop that's larger and I have a little bit smaller loop here. And what I do is open this loop up and form a lark's head knot with it by doing that. I just put my fingers in the hole, open them up, fold it over and pull the line through the loop so it's like that. Then I use the toe connection loop on the kite and it's got a knot there. I just Got caught in the knot itself here. Boy, did it. Okay, there we go. And just pull the uh, lark's head knot tight, and that's all you need to secure the line. Now, one thing that people worry about, and uh, good reason, <laughs> is the twisting of the line. Because uh, when you're flying a fighter kite, it's spinning a lot of the time, and 
there the line, the flying line itself, gets uh, quite twisted. And as a result, the line on the ground, when you're retrieving line, you're dropping the line right on top of the reel here, and it's going all over the ground, around your feet, and around the reel. So you have lots and lots of line on the ground. Well, when it's twisted, it has a tendency to get tangled up more readily than uh, if it isn't twisted. So some people prefer using a swivel. Now this I just un I use this second knot by the way, the second uh, loop I use to remove the, uh, the line. I I hold the uh, toe loop like this and just pull on the extra loop at the end of the line and then that releases the lark's head knot. So many people use a swivel or a snap swivel is what most of them use. Uh, something like this. Uh, let's see here, there it is. This is a bigger version of it. They're, they're just fishing line items buy at any tackle store or fishing department and I just lark's head it or if you do it just lark's head it right onto the uh, line just loop the line through there and pull it and uh, that secures it and then when you hook the kite up just unsnap the snap and connect the uh, fishing snap into the loop, the toe connection loop right here. Snap it, and you're good to go. Now the swivel, this is a larger one than I'd use. This is more the size I would use right here. The swivel, unfortunately, doesn't really remove all that much twist from the line. It does make it convenient for removing the kite and putting a different kite on if uh, just undoing the lark's head knot isn't uh, convenient for you. But uh, this is a different colored spool. It's, it's a gator spool too. It has a different colored line on it. I thought maybe easier to see. But uh, just tie a knot here and make a loop. I make the loop about two and a half inches long and then another one here and I find this to be really no problem in terms of twisting I mean yes the line gets twisted no doubt about that but no more than if I were to use a swivel I don't think anyway I've never had success with reduced line twist as a result of using swivels now some of the swivels are better than others no doubt about that and I'm attaching the line again. It's very simple to do, very simple to remove, put another kite on, and uh, you're ready to fly. But the most important thing about flying is, in keeping the line straight, when your kite crashes, or if you land a kite, <coughs> I'm not sure what the difference is exactly, but nonetheless, <laughs> when your kite's on the ground, and it might be uh, 25 to 100 feet away from you, depending on how much flying line you had out at the time it landed. Don't just walk out and grab the kite and come back to your reel. Take the reel with you and spool it up as you walk towards the kite. While you're doing that, you're uh, preventing an awful lot of tangles that otherwise would happen if you were to just bring the kite over to where you were flying and have all that line uh, blown around with the wind and getting tangled on different things. And the other thing about flying line that's important is to fly where the ground isn't full of snags. That's always a nuisance. I hope this has been helpful.